SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 was not a bad game, but it wasn't great either. WWE was in a bit of an awkward period where it was still clinging to the star power of years past, but that's not to say it didn't have anything going for it either. Released on October 20th, 2009, SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 had some work to do to redeem the positive connotation possessed by this once juggernaut series, since SmackDown vs. Raw 2009 wasn't as game-changing as it set out to be, and SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 had received relatively low reviews. The roster did feature 65 playable wrestlers, not counting DLC, as well as the return of the Legends roster, so it's not like it was necessarily short on options here. This game marked the video game debut of Dolph Ziggler, R-Truth, no, not K-Quick, Jack Swagger, and more, and even featured the return of Christian as well. Despite all of this, the roster still felt a little empty. While DLC had become available and commonplace in most games by now, this game had only featured Stone Cold Steve Austin as a downloadable character. We're about to look at a few potential superstars that would have made for a fantastic DLC pack back in the day that maybe would have given this roster a bit more depth and flexibility. Number 1. Drew McIntyre Drew McIntyre would begin his second stint on the main roster August 28, 2009 on SmackDown. McIntyre had spent some time on WWE television in 2007, but had been sent back to developmental territories after a short time, and this tenure would not be acknowledged on this return. McIntyre had been causing pure havoc and brutally attacking guys like R-Truth and Charlie Haas before Mr. McMahon himself would deem the Scotsman as a future world champion, and McIntyre would soon be known as the Chosen One. By October, McIntyre was collecting pay-per-view victories. If you were fortunate enough to catch the pay-per-views live and buy the games new on release or shortly after, you probably witnessed Drew McIntyre eliminate Matt Hardy and Evan Bourne in the traditional Survivor Series tag team match on his way to victory, only to boot up the game and realize that he was left out, and there's no way you can recreate this big event. The following month, Drew McIntyre would win the Intercontinental Championship after defeating John Morrison. McIntyre would remain unbeaten until February of 2010, and the clear intention to push the future superstar makes you wonder why nothing was done to get him into the game, even after its release. Even without the clear, on-screen endorsement of Mr. McMahon, most fans could tell that big things were in store for the young talent. And while the journey he would go on to achieve main event status is nothing short of inspiring, that's not what we're here for, so I'll stop myself now. But give this man the damn strap. As I was saying, McIntyre's strong presentation and constant usage upon his return to the main roster makes him a phenomenal prospect for a DLC pack to help enhance the roster of SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. Number 2. Sheamus Sheamus would debut in July of 2009 on the repackaged ECW brand. Sheamus began his main roster tenure by defeating local talents and soon getting into a short feud with Goldust, as well as working a short program with Shelton Benjamin that would ultimately end with Sheamus moving over to Monday nights, where his career would truly take off. The red-headed bastard forever immortalized himself when he forced Jamie Noble to retire in storyline, and the dominant emergence of Sheamus didn't stop there. It continued on through Survivor Series, where he, alongside pre previously mentioned Drew McIntyre, delivered an impressive performance on the way to a victory. On December 13th at the TLC pay-per-view, Sheamus would etch his name into the history books when he would shockingly defeat John Cena in a tables match for the WWE Championship. This was just roughly six weeks following the game's release, and Sheamus had sent shockwaves throughout the company that would shake the outlook to its very core. It would only take Sheamus 166 days since his debut to become world champion, a feat that only two others could claim that it took less time to become champ, those two being Ric Flair and Brock Lesnar. This means that by the time he had been included into a game's roster, he would have already had a world title reign. Sheamus was able to achieve a ton of success in 2009, more so than some who had been around the company for years. However, there was one accomplishment that eluded him that year, and that was to appear in WWE's main title series, SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. Considering the fact that he had entered the fray months before the game had become public, an inclusion via DLC would be justified. What name would you give this DLC pack? Let me know down below in the comments and don't forget to like the video if you want to see more. Thanks. Number 3. The Heart Dynasty. This one is a bit of a twofer. Natalia was included into the game, but for some reason Tyson Kidd and David Hart Smith were excluded from the final cut. Tyson Kidd debuted on the ECW brand on February 10th, 2009, well before the superstar cutoff of WrestleMania season. Come May of 2009, David Hart Smith would join the mix, creating the trio briefly known as the Hart Trilogy, but would soon settle on the name of the Hart Dynasty a mere couple of weeks later. The group would cause problems to the members of the ECW roster for a short time, before officially making the move over to 
SmackDown. Throughout the course of the year, the Hart Dynasty would take part in the huge 14-man bragging rights tag team match in a winning effort, and they would ultimately establish themselves as prominent players in the tag team division, which would accumulate to a unified tag team title reign all the way in 2010. Quite frankly, the duo of Tyson Kidd and David Hart Smith had been around long enough that their omission from the game doesn't make a ton of sense, opposed to so many other cases we've made in these videos. This team may not have made waves during their early days in the WWE, and unfortunately, for various reasons, the duo of Smith and Kidd did not last long in the WWE at all. However, this team of Heart Dungeon graduates may have been remembered more fondly had fans had the chance to use them in SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. Number 4 Zack Ryder The Long Island Loudmouth was someone who had been with the company for quite some time, as he made his main roster debut in 2007. While the obnoxious gimmick he was sporting in 2009 was a pretty drastic 180 from the edgehead era of Zack Ryder fans had grown accustomed to seeing, he was still a familiar face and former tag team champion to boot. Ryder certainly wasn't steamrolling anybody upon his new solo endeavors, but he did manage to earn himself an ECW championship match against Christian, despite coming up short in the effort. Following the loss, Zack Ryder would keep himself busy during the year by feuding with Tommy Dreamer, eventually forcing the latter to leave the company in storyline and would then get involved with Rosa Mendez, which I don't think many people would be upset about, if we're being honest. While the SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 roster was pretty stacked towards the top of the card and was loaded with familiar names, where it was lacking was the fresh face and undercard guys. And that's not to say that there weren't new names appearing on the roster, but after years and years of burying guys like Chavo Guerrero, Finley, and the Great Khali, some new lower to mid-card inclusions like Zack Ryder would have been a pleasant addition. Number 5. Yoshitatsu Yoshitatsu hit the main roster on the ECW brand on June 30th, just under four months prior to the release of SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. Tatsu was an established competitor who had spent time in New Japan Pro Wrestling before arriving in the WWE. Upon that arrival, Yoshitatsu quickly became a fan favorite, fueled by his smooth in-ring work and exciting moveset, also paired with a banger of an entrance theme. Yoshitatsu had been able to keep his name involved with the ECW Championship during his time with the brand before its end, though he would never be successful in his pursuits. Tatsu may not have been a main eventer, but his presence in the game would have been welcome. In my opinion, you can never have too many unique superstars that aren't only hard to duplicate, but also bring an exciting dynamic to the game, whether it be a moveset, entrance, etc. While this roster definitely did its part in delivering a quality list of playable superstars, improvement is always possible. And had Yoshitatsu been included into a DLC pack and made available to players, it would be hard to improve this roster much beyond that. Honorable Mention Layla. Layla takes our spot of the honorable mention here. Quite frankly, Layla has got herself an extremely strong case for a justified inclusion into the base game upon release, rather than an addition as DLC. Layla had been an active part of the company since her days in Extreme Exposé in 2007, and the former Diva Search winner really hit the ground running when she was drafted over to SmackDown in April of 2009. While she started off slow, finding herself in a losing effort and an angle with Eve Torres, she would begin what could be argued as her most significant work during her time with the WWE in the coming months with the formation of Lay Cool. Layla's work with Michelle McCool had put her firmly in the women's championship scene even if she began by assisting Michelle McCool retain her championship. Layla would eventually be the last recognized holder of the prestigious women's championship where she and McCool would unofficially co-reign as champions. While Layla was included in last year's game and would be included in future games, she was excluded here for whatever reason and it's simply difficult to justify. As these games progressed, the developers truly did improve when it came to including the majority of deserving superstars, as the rosters became more complete upon release with each year. While it's virtually impossible for the developers to roll out a flawless roster, a commendable job was done here, as they even included all of the active champions at the time of release. But of course, you can never get everybody, and so we'll continue to make these hypothetical pleas to insert these wrestlers retroactively. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to check out the other roster omission videos on the channel. But that'll do it for me here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy.